Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. We are looking at Thomas's VI 955. The tag's pretty faded out, but I think this is a 70. Damn. I'm going to say a 76 model. Anyway, pretty nice looking, but. One problem. I can't pull it. But before we panic and assume that it's, you know, the garbage engine, let's get uh, get some stuff apart and figure out what's actually going on here. Because I've seen some strange stuff that uh, turned out to be good because it wasn't a, wasn't a blown engine. But again, not to jump to any conclusions. We're going to get some stuff apart here. And it looks like I finally have got my camera thing figured out. I was doing a bunch of work on an XL12 earlier this morning, and what I ended up doing somehow is recording all the time that I didn't want to record, and all the stuff that I thought I'd recorded wasn't there, which made for an absolutely useless batch of stuff that got deleted. So I'll try to avoid doing that again. All right. So, we know the crank bearings aren't seized. That's something. Let's get this muffler off. I just had that adapter. It's amazing how you can set something down and it would just disappear right in front of your eyes. Okay, I think I remember talking about this. Piston looks good. <clears throat> At least what we can see of it. But I want to point something out. You can see the piston looks good. But look at all that corrosion down there below that mounting on the bottom of the cylinder there. I don't know why that's there. I'm actually questioning whether it's corrosion. No, it's not. It's some sort of a greasy, oily thing. That's something I don't normally see on one of these. Again, I'm not going to jump to any conclusions because I really don't know. But the piston does not move when we're doing this, which I think is why Thomas was under the impression that it's got a broken connecting rod and it very easily could. That's interesting. Okay. Let's get the starter off. There's definitely an internal problem on this bad boy. to never see the piston move. Wow. Alright, well we're going to find out what's down in there. Okay, these VIs are a little bit more of a hassle to work on than a standard 925 because of this isolation system. We'll see how much and whatever has happened to this upper mount, this was supposed to have some sort of a stud in it, not this setup. But I guess as long as it works, who am I to complain? So you've got to get that upper point loose, and back here at the throttle handle, there's a screw. Okay. 
attempt to keep this uh, straight. Yeah, it's definitely homemade, but you know, it's working. All right. This is going to have to be torn down just about as far as one of these things can go. Huh. And I can guarantee you that this little screw does not belong on the air filter bracket. Now, folks, I see one massive problem, <clears throat> excuse me, already. And what are the odds there would be a connecting rod bearing needle way the hell up here in the carburetor chamber? Now, I don't think there's any chance in hell it could have passed from the engine back up through the reed assembly and into there, but the fact that there's one loose leads me to believe this has been completely apart previously, and in all likelihood, one of those needles was missed. That's not good. Yeah, I'm going to finish getting this throttle handle off. Get this retainer clip loose. And then I think that whole pin should just push out the other side. Yeah. Okay. And then off that comes. Alright. We need to get the carburetor out of the way here. We need to get this manual oiler out. There's a real tiny set screw on this. It's in the front of that motor, right above here. You can see it's full of crap, but there we go. You need to loosen that and back it pretty much all the way out. That might be enough. And then it should start to loosen up on the shaft. If it's been on there for a while, and then pop that all the way out. Oh yeah, Oop, this has had some work. That is not a home white hose. It's also spongy as hell. It's interesting. Normally oil doesn't do that to these hoses. But we'll leave it hooked up now so it doesn't puke all over the bench. Wow. I just don't. The more we dig, the more. There's another another connecting rod needle. That's two now. I don't know what the hell is going on here, but it's... I think it's safe to say it's nothing good. So the fact that the piston looks good is great, but if, say, a connecting rod breaks while the engine's running, which is it's when it's going to happen, the odds that it didn't gouge the ever-living crap out of the bottom of the cylinder, I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. Because if the, the skirt of the cylinder gets all scored up, it's just as bad as if the upper part does. Because the piston will touch it, get torn up, and, and it's game over. And we'll see. Alright. Choke rod out of the way. Ah, that fuel hose. Nice shot. There we go. Okay. So, keep finding stuff here. Wow. That's actually a broken rod bearing needle. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this reed assembly in here is completely destroyed. Because here's some plastic that looks like part of the reed cage. Boy, this is... I don't know what to make of this, folks. This is 
This is new to me. I haven't seen one do this before. Let's see if we can get this carburetor chamber off. Let's see if I can cheat and get this lower one loose without too much drama. Get them loose. There we go. So the distance out there, out front, I hear the mail truck. And that is great news. Providing the box that he's going to be dropping off is as in as good a shape as it was when it left Canada. I was, uh, oh heck in Canada that I've been working with to get a bunch of parts for a uh, we decided it was a super or a XL 923 saw that he has uh, he sent me this uh, ad on Kijiji I think that's how you pronounce it somebody correct me if I'm wrong uh, and it was for a saw that you just don't see ever in the States I've only ever seen one of them uh, in Europe it was a collector that already owned it. There might be a, might be more than one on Magnus's site. I'm not sure. But anyway, we'll be doing an unboxing after after this guy. Should be one more screw. Yeah, tucked away way at the bottom down here. Don't forget that one and start prying on this housing. You'll have other things to fix. And this is true of a, a standard 925 as well. There is that lower screw to deal with. But now it should basically... Oh, manual oiler over here. That is one difference having that located up here. So now I guess it is going to puke oil all over the bench if it's full. We'll hope it's not. The inlet line is the hose and the outlet is this copper piece. And that makes sense. The inlet, all you got to do is withstand suction. The outlet, you could build some some decent pressure. And there's that fuel hose that's getting replaced. Let's see if it'll come off without too much drama here. Oh, come on! I'm trying to avoid ripping my fingers apart. Now maybe she'll come off. Get to this kill switch. Okay. Obviously this bad boy needs a little cleanup. Alright, I guess we better get the coil off. Oh wow. Jeez. I can see that that reed cage is blown, so I would say it does have a broken connecting rod. Shot straight up and knocked that reed cage apart. That's, wow, that's a hell of a note. Alright, we'll just keep going, see what the heck we got to deal with here. This is definitely one of the more wild situations I've come across. The seesaw is not uncommon, but damn few actual broken connecting rods. 
So I'm going to be interested to see where it broke and see if we can figure out why it broke. Because that is part of the process when you repair a saw. If something's broken, you want to try and take the time to figure out why it broke. That way you can prevent it from breaking again. I would think if it was a situation where there was an improper fuel mix, usually the piston is going to score and seize to the cylinder long before the, the rod is going to break. Oh, come on. We shall see. Alright, now we should be able to leave this ignition as one assembly and just get these three outer screws loose here and of course the one at the very back but these can be a pain in the ass to get off of here so we'll see there's a couple of there should be a there's an index pin up here I know that. if there's only one maybe this won't be oh, as big of a hassle Tight those appear to be. I don't know. The hell size? Oh. Some metric junk mixed in here too. Where is my standard seven sixteenths? Saws apart today. Seriously. Hey, even if on the camera it looks like this bench is a disaster, it's not that bad. enough to justify missing sockets. Cramp on that. <sighs> Alright. Mm -hmm. Waste a bunch of time. Someone's been in here. I mean, we knew that, but I mean, what I'm, what I'm seeing doesn't make me hopeful for the quality of the work. There's blue silicone everywhere. And that... God! That shouldn't be... Over here there's a gasket, and they're not hard to find. And using silicone in place, you know, gasket maker type in place of the gasket if it's not available, but these are available. Easy to find. Alright, so this is where you gotta be really careful. You can't ding up crankcase. You can break this mount. wiggle it until you find somewhere that you can start doing a safe pry. And this is flexing so much that is not it at the moment. See if we can knock 
like this. And that doesn't appear to have done diddly squat. Actually, it did, but it looks like ah, that what's left of that rod won't turn to a line to come out of this. So we'll get our module out of the way. Normally, you can leave this on, just leave it hooked up. Not today. Good thing is these are labeled. And these leads will be formed after all this time. This side's a little generator. This one is, I think, switch. Nah, I can't even read it. It's so full of garbage. But like I say, these are molded. They are coated with a silicone to keep them from arcing to the bottom of the flywheel. And we will probably do that ourselves. If this gets reassembled, okay. I saw a gap open up in here. Not a huge one, but enough. to get started. We can keep this side from closing back up. Pry on this side. We should we'll get that index pin to start releasing. Or just break a little tab. Not careful. Nope. I do not like this particular there she goes. Come on, baby. Once you get it to start to move, then you're home free. Wow. You shouldn't see metal on that back plate. Bare minimum, the whole bottom end of that connecting rod exploded. See all the guts down there? Hmm. Now it's hard to put a positive spin on that. Let's see if we can get this cylinder off. And we'll really see what's cooking. Not the only thing I can see from here that. Might be good. Be as if it managed to break without tearing up the crankshaft. Don't ask me if I'm optimistic about that. Yeah, there's that 716 I was looking for. Kind of like when you're trying to think of something at work and you remember at 2 in the morning when you wake up. No use at that point. Now, the very tight clearance here. Next to no room to spin the wrench. Especially as you get to the top of the threads. And half the time the nut's stuck in there until you start lifting the cylinder up. And that one is. Okay. 
Seriously. Don't think there's any way to put a positive spin on this at all. So it's what's left of the connecting rod. You can see it is twisted and it is tight in the bore. So when it blew up, it distorted that piston. A whole bunch of the skirts broken off right there. For grins, I'll put this in the vise and see if it'll even turn. But I know damn well it won't. Let's see, can you guys... Yeah. All I'm going to do is clamp this already busted end in here and try twisting the cylinder by hand. I'll be damned. I'll be damned, folks. I'll have to clean this up. But that's not scored. Nope, okay. One of the needles took a big chunk out of a transfer port there. That seals it. Piston and cylinder are garbage. And yeah, a person could probably try to smooth that opening of the transfer port out, but it's never going to be right. That's going to affect your fuel timing. So much material from the old rod down in here. Yeah, it ain't Christmas. Wow. Not good, folks. And the crank is scored. Okay. All right, well, I don't like these kind of videos. Thomas, we got issues. I don't even know. A rod, yep, we'll find that easy enough. A crank, I probably even have that in stock, especially given that this is the electronic ignition. Uh, it's the piston and cylinder. Little Red Barn makes reproduction pistons. I've used them. They are not bad. They'll work. But a cylinder, those don't grow on trees, so unless we can locate one used somewhere, which that I don't have, it's going to be tough to get this one going. So... Yeah, folks, I'm going to talk with Thomas, see what he wants to do, and uh, we'll check back in a little later.